Hello, this is Max Drake. I want to talk about this um, uh, Y Edge um, chart. I've been using things like Bubble Us and uh, MindMeister to do a little bit of mind mapping and hierarchical information and processes and stuff um, to do with some organisation with my daughter's project. And um, I do find it a bit of a nuisance is that you go into Bubble Us, it's really good at moving the data around and stuff and exploring and putting ideas down. But a lot of the information you're typing right in the box. This particular one, uh, I was looking at Visio and I got an RSS feed on Visio and a couple of other programs, all of them that you had to pay for. So I went on to alternative2.net website and I found that there was this one came up. Now, one of the things that blew me away was this great chart here was created using all this information from a spreadsheet. So these are the nodes, which are the little yellow boxes, and these are the linkages in between. So I thought, that's really cool. You can actually just pull data in and then do it. And the other one as well is that you can then use that data somewhere else. So if it's linked to other information, it's all together. So anyway, there's a tutorial out here which is on that, and it's a very good tutorial. I'm very impressed with this guy here. And it's a free program. Now, you can download the program from here, and I'll put the links in the thing below. And you can also have it running in your browser. But I did find it was slow, slow so in the end, I actually just downloaded the program because I prefer to have it there. Um, then you've got a little bit of a con control on what you're doing. So I'm not going to bother talking about that program. I'm just going to talk about, uh, I'm going to do a couple of videos on some of the things that I found out. Now, first of all, I ended up with, um, uh, I made my little box. Now, his one, if you look at his video through there, uh, his boxes aren't very aesthetic, but he was just sort of showing the principles, so that's fine. So I actually want to make my boxes a little bit prettier. And so what I was doing here inside the program was just doing them. Now, what I actually found is every time you go and update your Excel sheet, you add some extra lines on or something like that, Everything just turns back to the one object that you pick, so they all turn back to the orange of this type here. So a lot of the times you actually want it maybe a different colour. Maybe you want a blue one or something like that because you've got four levels of something. Oh, you need to differentiate your information. So you can make a blue one there. And because it's exactly the same template as all the other ones, when you go and change them over and swap them over, they'll actually have all of the other formatting that you actually had before. So if I go there and I'm going to add that one, I can actually add that to the palette, which is the your chart one and you can see it comes through there in fact that looks identical to the other one so I'm just going to delete that one and I'm going to change the color on that because that color there I've already got so I want a pale blue there so that's the one that I want so I'm going to go into there add to the palette all chart and there we go boom it's up there so those are just making those objects now this is one that I did before and now I want to go and change it now I can actually go through and actually change these objects through here and I can change the colors through there or else I can actually just select that one there and go apply and all of those ones get update there so that's quite good you then there's also the changing of ob, changing the objects and moving them around a bit now the other one is that suddenly i've got some updated data like there's only three six seven lines of data there if i go and try and update now you see this has got a graph as well so as soon as i go and do that all chart it goes and creates the information and I'm just going to drop down here and do 10 because I want to demonstrate. Uh, so I'm only going up to row 10 on theater because I want to update some other stuff through there. So as soon as it comes through, it creates as a new sheet. So it doesn't do anything with the other one. Once that's done, it's done. You can do a little bit of tweaking and editing in here and go through and edit some of the stuff and go and put it in there. Oh, did that happen? That didn't go. Didn't even go in there. I wonder if, it, if you can then update that. So if we go edit property mapper, update apply yeah you can see that one did up, update there so you can do it but you see straight away all my formatting is gone so i actually need to go and select those and go and select that right hand click and go apply and go and change all of those and the other one that you do for some of your editing is you go use the shift button and click mouse and then you grab them or you grab them down here as well and then you can just grab it from the side and then you can make them bigger and then you can select and then you can do your layout and go and do your hierarchy layout and it will just change it and make them a bit neater. Now what it's actually sizing on is the biggest text in the top row. So if you want it to size on the second one, you might have to change that label name to be a second label one. 
Anyway, we aren't going to go into that at, at this point in time. We've come through here. We've got that information coming in. So um, we've selected that and we've selected an error and that's what they've come through. So now we're going to do the update and we're just going to go edit, come through here and we go to the property mapper and we prop the two. Now, again, the first one was actually, I'm going to go back into substitute and do that because I want to talk about something else. If we apply that, you see, oh, sorry. Um, hmm. Let me just go and have a look at that Excel sheet. No, okay. What I want to do is I actually want a URL in this line here. So I'm just going to update that. I'll just go back into the sheet again. I'm just going to go back into there again. I'm going to go and uh, take that chart, go open, update. Yes, we're going to do that. It's going to do that. We've got the same mapping. Oh, while I'm actually here, I can actually just do the mapping. So I'm going to go down to um, row 11. The other thing that I actually want to do at this point in time is, I'll get there eventually, is he never used this cell here. Now, if I choose the department name through here and go adopt here, look what happens here. It groups them by their department. Isn't that nice? And uh, but you don't see anything information on there. So what I've now got to do is to go and take those, go into the edit, go into the property mapper, and then I've got to map those things across. So I'm mapping the first row label text is going into label text row number one, which is the top label. So this is what you're seeing. You're mapping them to. So those texts are where we've got role name and substitute. You can just call them one, two, three. There's no point in all that stuff because we're mapping to them. So these ones here. So instead of substitute, well, actually we're going to have substitute now so we're going to go apply and then you see updates now this one here has a url but if you click on it it's just text because if we look at the mapping inside that it actually says we're mapping it to a text field now there is an actual url field that we can use but i'm going to talk about that in the second video because it's a bit too much to do so again one of the things that we suddenly saying well actually i don't want that in there what i actually want them to have is i want them to have the depart oh, blast wrong one i don't need that i can want to map to department so i can quite easily remap so instead of having the map the map to substitute there i can map to department and go apply okay now it comes in and all the departments come in now because i've got this and this is set it up by department i can suddenly then actually i don't want that at all i'm just going to go back into my sheet again so i'm going to make my organized sheet be there and we know that it's already there and we're just going to blow that data away through there and go okay so it's organized it back on that one again we then select that go into edit i wish there was a fast key for this properties mapper but i suppose we're just going to apply that through there and then it comes through. So again, what I can do with all of these is that I can select all of these through here. Um, anything apart from Greyhouse Design, I think it is. Let's just grab all of those and we're just going to stretch them to make them look pretty. And then we're just going to go to layout and change it to hierarchical. And there we are. So that's as much as what I want to talk through there. Now, the next part of the process is the fact is, again, we can do the aesthetics and we can actually just come through and change those. I would get this one wrong. You go through there, you click on that, you right hand click the mouse, you then go apply and then it's there. So this is how you've got to go through there. You've got to go through to there right hand click apply and then it happens so there you've got your, your thing and you can move these around so you can select all of those and drag them across you can add some grids through there um, that's as much now as soon as i save this so if i go file save it's saving it as a graph ml so once i've saved that it ceases to have that link with the Excel sheet. So the Excel sheet's only good for that one off if you actually want to do it. Now this is fine, but this is how do we consume this information? So how do we use this information once we got it? So we can export it. So inside here we can go and do some export stuff, but we can do some smart export stuff. Now one of the things through here that is all of these objects actually have, not that, that object there, is it has this URL field and it has a description field. So what that means is that when we actually export this and we can export it as something like a um, HTML, so I'm just going to use an example here, 
if we exhaust it. So therefore, I've created that. This isn't a particularly pretty one, and this was something I was demonstrating thing. Well, and one of them is that if I actually just map a URL to a line of data, it's actually just a bit of bloody text. And in fact, this is an image, so it doesn't work as well. But you see, when I hover over here, there is, it's given me a little pop-up bit of information. And if I click on that, it takes me to a link. So that's the power. One, I can actually put this on my website so I can actually have a website. Then I can actually suddenly say, well, tell me about that guy or tell me about this person here. And I can give a link across to another page which actually has a whole lot of information of their experience or other data that you actually may have of an interest on them. Or the other one is if you actually have a process and you want to go and say, explain that part of a process. So this is a process diagram. Give me the link through that. So that is what I'm going to talk about in the next um, video. So it was a free program. I think this is seriously cool because the other thing that I find is a bit powerful is that I can use this information in other things. Now, one of the things that I'm actually doing at the moment is I'm doing a bit of equipment mapping inside um, BIM and I'm actually doing uh, a whole lot of uh, room data sheets. And inside the room data sheets, I'm using certain bits of equipment. So you can actually have a process with certain bits of equipment and I'm actually dragging or I can import or export that information into, um, and that's not very elegantly put there, is it? Oh. Um, I can take that information. Uh, it's a bit slow in here because I've got the video open. And I can push this, like, this information through into an Excel spreadsheet or something like that. And I can start using it in different processes or I can actually have data flows or information that I can pull. So I can link up information from here in, through spreadsheets because inside here you can actually export to a spreadsheet and then from that spreadsheet you can pull and actually adjust it so that you can make link nodes or things or other associations of what you can do. So it makes it a lot more cohesive in that you're actually using through in some ways a spreadsheet interface to actually do a whole lot of things in different areas. One you've got kind of um, a flow diagrams and graphics and stuff like that. On the other side you've got drawing. So you're using the information coming through. Um, again uh, so the other thing is the, as, as, as part of that goes is that I've got a few URLs here and then also as a descriptor I've actually got the person's name and then I'm just adding bio data so I'm actually putting a bit of blurb through there or that could just be and CV or something um, so it just takes you to a link through there and it's an explanatory one that comes through so I can actually just take that and I can just click it to the bottom and there it comes through there so we can save that so I hope that's been of interest to you I'm actually finding this program seriously cool to play with and uh, it updates quite nice as far as if you're in the org chart and, and to a certain extent that's where you actually want it um, when you're actually in the Excel once you've actually fixed what you actually want to do Really, in some ways, you actually want a static and then you can come back and revisit the stuff because you can just rebuild from the Excel sheet. So I hope that's been of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, can you please give a thumbs up? Thank you.